Welcome back to Daily Flash to the top. Carlos Navarro, he's a talented actor, radio voiceover actor as well, working on huge shows like Marvel's Hawkeye, The Walking Dead, and Bloodline. He's also the co-host for the number one morning show here in Orlando, Monsters in the Morning. And he gets to make fun of Russ every morning as well. He's also on top of that. He's a softball coach for his daughter, and he's joining us now. My man, Mitch. How are you, bud? How are you doing? Good to see you. You know what's so crazy? We were just talking about this. Yeah. Like, you and I, we always bumped into yourself, mm -hmm, and we were saying, mm -hmm. like, no, I I want to do something with him. I want to do something. I now we got you. Now we're here. We're, we're here. here. You look good. You are a good looking man. I look man. a little bit different than last time. No, <laughs> you look sharp. Well, you got like, you were skinny and then like big and then skinny and now yeah. like, boom, you nailed it. It's the the, the inflatable host. Is, is, uh, <laughs> much. Yeah, they have a little pump. You can see the host. Little less. Here. Little. Depends on who the hosts are. Look good, man. They made me look a little bit bigger, make you look nice with that nice shirt and everything. I, you know, I had to pull out the uh, the it. nice shirt that you normally go to like some sort of wedding with in Miami. I love it. Here's the thing about Carlos. If you need a spark plug, if you need some like uh, you know something going, Carlos shows up. There's going to be a party. Right? Boom! But there comes a little bit of stories behind all yeah. that. All right. So I'm going to go back. You know, back in the day, back you know, you oh. had a full head of hair. Oh, it was flowing. It was flowing. It was flowing. Going around fourth grade, little Carlos wanted to do what? Do exactly what I'm doing right now. All right, now, now so and you people hear that and I they're know, like, crazy. oh, it's sure, it's that's what you want to do. But how did you, what, what happens when people like that? Because the same way, I'm sure we look around, mm -hmm. everybody in here say, I always wanted to mm -hmm. do this. What happens between there and then? <sighs> I had a fourth grade teacher, Miss Moresco. She loved my fourth grade stories. Okay. okay, all right. And she just, every week, I would look forward to, I've never told this story, I'm oh. So I, I would look forward to telling my story that I would create and then put the vocabulary words to all the kids. Okay. And then I would stand up and I look forward and all the kids would laugh every week. <laughs> and every week I'd look forward to Miss Moresca, I swear to God, she goes, Carlos, one day you're gonna win an Oscar. This was out of the blue. And she would look forward to my stories as she drank her Dynatab. Remember that old <laughs> yeah. slip pad thing? And I would make it for her, I'm like, and I'd be like, this week's story is really good. She's like, I can't wait. And my mom, like I had some really big influences that like sparked my, you could, you could be in TV. I had no reason. English wasn't my first language. Right. I had grandmas that were raising me and, and, and first generation American, but I love the movies. Yeah. I love Steven Spielberg. And I said, whatever it is, I just got to be a part of it. And that's how it ended up kind of just like manifesting. The, the, where, tell me the moment when you're like, holy crap, I'm doing what I always said I wanted to do. Was, did you have, you have a oh, moment like that? Oh, all but the, the time. But the first time. The first huh? time was w w staring at Jason Bateman in Identity Thief. Yes. Face to face in the middle of an improv scene that we're doing. It's a great, you've been there, you're a convenience store clerk. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. it's called Identity Thief, and it was my first big role. Yeah. And I was really down on my luck, I'd lost my job, I was, it was in a good time. So that's the point normally in the story where you go, man, I shouldn't be doing that, I better go be a realtor, you know, whatever. And uh, then it goes, hey, look, you got this role. And I was like, okay, and I go to Atlanta, and this was when Atlanta was kind of yeah. booming, and there is Jason Bateman. Fast forward to me in this scene with Jason Bateman, and at, at the end, he goes, man, that was awesome. And it was this validation. It, yeah. And we did it all day long, the scene. And then they put it in the trailer. And it was like, I had nothing going for me, right? Except this little, I was like, I made the trailer. <laughs> so that was what kind of kept me going and, and made me realize, whoa, I could be here. Yeah. And did you feel that that, that was the moment that you go, I, I, that's what's going to keep me holding on? Kind of like you grasped mm -hmm. on to go a little bit further. That was mm -hmm. the moment that took you there. It's awesome. It's done great for you. Thank you. Because... There's one name synonymous, I think anybody, when it comes to movies, and it's called Marvel. Yeah. All right, and you're, you've done some of the Marvel, yeah. the, the trench coat, uh, not trench coat, the... Uh, That's the, a different the, one. The, <laughs> completely different one. That's a different track one. Tracksuit. Track 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 Look at that clear. Let's get that make sure we're 100% clear. Tracksuit mafia yeah. here, I mean, and, and Hawkeye and such. Did, did, tell me about that, the feeling, with knowing that you're part now. I mean, you're going to conventions and all yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah, well, Walking Dead was <laughs> awesome and huge and fun right. and everything. That was a changer, game changer. But Marvel, where Marvel's at now, and this, like kind of most everybody looks like, ah, I was a fan the same way. Right. But you know, you get the audition. It says, hey, you're gonna be shooting for six months. It's this untitled project. You're like, all right, let me do it, because I'm gonna do it. And then you forget about it. And then one day you're taking your kid around the Science Center on a tour, and you get a call from your agent, like, you booked it. And I'm like, what did I book? Marvel. And you go, I will. <laughs> yeah, right? And you get to a set, and you're looking at Jeremy Renner, and you're on these massive freaking sets yeah. that's supposed to be Brooklyn, and you're just like, wow. It says, because of how low I got, I can really appreciate yeah. when it gets that good. 
You know? you, and you, yeah, you do appreciate where you're yeah. at, and that kind of pushes you even further to where you want to go along mm -hmm. with your career. I love that you talked about your kid. You're always promoting your wife as yes, well and stuff. Yes. I love that in your kid. Matter of fact, you know, you're, you're there for your, your kids as a softball, and mm -hmm. you know, with the knee problem and all that <laughs> stuff that you had to go through. And you figure about all this. How do you manage radio, TV, uh, and doing these projects as well? What's the most important key that kind of keeps the gel together for you? Uh, being very conscious about my day okay. and my time and my priorities. My family is my top priority. But obviously, I'm not gonna be like, I can't leave for six months to because I gotta shoot Hawkeye, I can't do that. Right. No, of course, you gotta make some different things, but when I would go shoot Hawkeye for three weeks, or I'd drive back, be with the family for a week. Other people didn't do that. I'd come back, I won't take certain things. I, 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 I know that I only have a certain amount of time with my family, uh, my, my girls, to influence them the best that I can, and then that's gone, and you know that, yep, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and I'll keep on acting and doing all that other stuff, but a conscious effort and decision making with your time instead of living it like most of us indiscriminately. Getting all the quadrants of your life mm -hmm. being centered with it all together. Exactly. They're not that. all gonna hit all the time. No, right, right, right. And if I if, if you think they're all gonna hit all the time, you're gonna be disappointed. Usually one facet of your life isn't hitting that well. But if you can kind of maintain them and then overall raise your standard, you're gonna be in a much better place. What what scares you? Scares me is not being there for my kids. Oh wow. That's, that's, that's a big deal, huh? That's the it's a big deal. And 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 I feel like I've done a good enough job and they can go watch me and listen to me later on and everything, you know? But I don't know. I feel like man, just let me let me let me stick around for especially my two year old. You know when you're looking at your two year old and you're like yeah. Damn, man, they, they ain't really gonna remember this time. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna remember the time they spent with you. Yeah, just like I am as well. I mean. can, can we have you come back again sometime? Of course. To the top. We're no, gonna talk not. about that. He's yes. always pushing it together. And Carlos Navarro, thank you so much. We'll have more. And of course, this uh, interview, as well as a whole lot more on our website, dailyflashshow.com.